So welcome back to the Wisdom Factory. I'm Heidi, sitting in a very nice springtime Italy. It's uh, mid-February, more or less, and it's very unusual to have these flowers. It's a virtual background, but if you want to see, these are now there. These are the real ones, and I really love this. This is one of the reasons why I am in Italy. But online, we, you can find me on thewisdomfactory.net, where we have many of these interviews, conversations in English, but also in German. And I hope you enjoy also this session, which I have with your, your Joseph McQueen. <laughs> he said in Irish. That's the okay. Irish pronunciation, exactly. Yeah, McQueen in English. So uh, I want immediately to give over to you and invite you to tell a little bit about you and what we are going to talk about. What is so interesting to you that you want to have it publicized, publicized in the Wisdom Factory? <laughs> oh, good morning, Heidi. Thank you so much. It's, uh, it's absolutely wonderful to see such a beautiful background as well, because here it's, um, we seem to be heading back into winter conditions. With, we're expecting snow and, and all of that tomorrow. So. Um, it's it's beautiful to see such such wonderful vibrant colors. And what I what I'm about really is I, I worked as a healer and a therapist for many many years, but I've particularly specialized in the ancient Chinese art of reading faces. And I learned it as a diagnostic tool initially as part of my training as a therapist. But I was reading people when I was a very small child. I was reading people's energy, and the more I worked with face reading, the more I could see more deeply not just uh, health related conditions, but I could see more of the person's life story, not the, not the intimate details of the life story, but I could see so much of their emotional history, how they've responded to life's challenges, um, how they, the energy, the level of energy, the level of connectedness they bring to life, the vibrancy or the, or the lack of vibrancy, whether they're really, really alive or not. And whether, the, and, and that also tells me a lot about where they can be in their life, how, yeah, how fully alive they can be. So when I'm looking at a face, I'm not just seeing what people, I guess most people would normally see. I'm not just looking in terms of whether somebody is attractive or not attractive or any of those things, because that, to me, that's really superficial anyway. I'm particularly looking at, I'm looking especially at the eyes because there's an old saying that the eyes are the windows to the soul. But whether, whether we think in those terms, the eyes reveal so much about the real person. We can say, we can use words a lot. We can we can be very articulate and very expressive, but the eyes really tell me, but who is this person? Where are they in their life? Are they really fulfilled? Are they, are they joyful or, or are they somewhere else? And then we can even, we can break the face down into divide the face into many sections. So for example, the person's own right side tells about their public persona, yeah, their public persona, and the left side tells about their private persona. So how you are in public and how you are in private. And for many people, they're two completely different things. They're not aligned. So looking at looking at the two sides of the face tells me again about how much harmony the person has in their life and how fulfilled they really are publicly mm -hmm. as well as privately. This is amazing. That's I have never heard about that. I only was thinking when you were telling this, um, is this the reason that there are some people you cannot look into their eyes, they go away, they, they, they just avoid uh, to not to, to allow people to look into your soul, is it that the reason? <laughs> In some cases, yes, we have to bear in mind that, uh, for example, some people with um, who are in under the the autist the autistic spectrum are very uncomfortable with with eye contact. So, assuming assuming people do not have autism, many people are so deeply insecure and deeply unhappy, or 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 they're uh, or they're they're often in a place where they want to deceive you. That's another possibility. Mm -hmm. So eye contact is not comfortable for them. So there can be a number of reasons, but I always like to make direct eye contact because that to me is the deepest contact we can make because we're looking, whether, we're, whether we think about, about it as soul contact or not, it's a very deep way of making, making contact and being very real and being very present with somebody. 
So I have a suggestion because you are looking sort of down on the right. Can you do in some way that you look into the camera so we can see your eyes when the guy? Sure. sure. Yeah. You, I'm you, can, I'm... you can put the window a little higher to your camera, and then it's it's more easy that we have the impression that that we can see your eyes. Sure. Sure. I have. Yeah. I'm still adjusting to. Um being online so much because I have this thing, I, when I see a, another face on the screen, I look at the face rather than into the camera. So my apologies for that. It's, it's kind of an automatic yeah. human reaction. If you put the other person right underneath the camera, then it looks like if you look into their face, you know, yeah. That might work better. Yeah. Do you think that I look into your face now? It looks to me that way, yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I yeah. have you, your picture right underneath the camera. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I say that only because it's so important to your topic, you know? Of course, of course, yes. Yeah. But tell me I, more about right side, left side, and all this. I've never heard about that. That's so interesting. Yeah, and the, the and we can we can divide it even further because the right side also tells about how we've been influenced by our mother genetically as well as in terms of our relationship with our mother and her her ancestry and then the left side tells about how we've been influenced by our father again genetically and by him our relationship with him and his ancestry so there are many many layers to looking at the face many um yeah, many different dimensions so for me when i'm looking at a face then i have to almost remove myself from from the equation and uh, just be be as completely empty as I can be. So I allow the information to come to me. So a question, how do you know that it is uh, connected with the mother or connected with the father? How, how, where is, where do you get yeah. that from? <laughs> okay, that is, that uh, that's simply the ancient Chinese teaching. Like it's, it, what I'm working with is it, it's, 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 it's it, it's a tradition that goes back at least 3000 years. That's the documentation is, is goes back that far and that's what they have that's what they have taught so the the my understanding of the chinese tradition is that they were more concerned with what rather than why so and so it's 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 what has been used and understood over that period of time so that's what i found to be quite accurate so that's what i work with yeah and um i think it's also right to give back a place to the intuitive no knowledge and the evidence knowledge instead of yeah. needing to have everything done by scientific method, which is not bad, but uh, we should in include uh, also the other ways of knowing. So yeah, thank yeah. you. That answers my question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose the other the other aspect of that too for me is when I when I trained, I was taught the, the Latin, uh, the, the, I was, I was introduced to the Latin phrase non credo, which means I do not believe. So for me, I look, I, I look at the information and then I check, is this actually true? So there is, for me, there's a, there's a scientific mindset at least that goes with it. It's not purely intuitive because yeah. I, I have to confirm, I have to confirm with the people and particularly if I'm working with groups of people where they know each other and I don't know any of them. Like if I go into a business context and I'm telling them about them, other people in the room will confirm or deny. Mm -hmm. So I have to be able to pick up the, uh, intuit the information, but then check is, is my, excuse me, is my observation accurate? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the advantage which we have as modern people that we have both modalities uh, at disposition no? that we can, in integral, you would say the outside look and the inside look, we have both yep. possibilities and that makes it more complete and more, also more reliable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And having been able to look at any given situation from a variety of perspectives gives us a more complete picture. Yeah. Wonderful. So you talk about business context. What do you do in business context with face reading? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you, you see my face and see you know, either I can cheat you or I can get things out of you or, you know, I don't, know. I don't yeah. pretend that, but you no, know, no. What, what is the use of it? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I personally, when I'm, when I'm meeting anybody, 
either in a personal situation, a social situation, or a business situation. I just I just prefer it to be authentic. And people either want to work with me or they don't, or they like me or they don't like me, and it's it's all okay. But in a, in a business context, typically, I could um, I can sit in on interviews. I can assist interviewers or in our interview panel, particularly for um, interviews for senior level positions. And I I make it very clear that I do not advise hire this person or don't hire this person but i do write up a, and sometimes i will speak in the interview and sometimes i won't but i i will always write up a profile and say their cv says this and in the interview they said that but this is the real person if you hire them this is how they will really behave this is how they will really communicate this is what will cause them stress this is how they will respond under stress and then it's the company to decide. But I can also, I, at times, I could also sit in on the, on negotiations to read <clears throat> to read the people on the other side of the table, and then I would help with teams with their communication. So, in in many aspects, you are very dangerous for people like mafia and uh, all the <laughs> try to do their things. <laughs> And you are there, you can see them. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I, when I was a therapist, I worked, I, I had many clients who were police officers, detectives, lawyers, and people who worked in that, that side of the, 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 legal, the legal field. And I decided that I never wanted any contact with that. So I, 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 work, with, I work with business people, but once it becomes to do with the legal side, no, no thanks. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> yeah. I I can understand that. That's not. But on the other hand, you know, we in integral community were thinking a while ago. I remember Jeff Sausman talking about what if we were all transparent to each other. If yeah. we could read our thoughts, wouldn't it be better? Because all this cheating stuff which is going on of fake false information by whoever, yeah. uh, we could see the the motivation behind that. We would see that this is false, that they pretend on that. And you are saying somehow that you are able to see that? And wouldn't it be good if we were able? Or, I don't know, I, you know, just throwing it in. Yeah, but we're so far from that in terms of our human evolution, um, because I mean, we can see it in the world around us with all the confusion and all the anger and the hatred, the frustration, all of that going on in the world around us. We don't even have to look very far to see that. So we're so far from being aware enough and evolved enough to do that. I mean, it, it, would, be, it would be idyllic if we were that enlightened. Um, who knows, maybe it'll come sometime. But all I can do is be as authentic as I can be with people and then that's that's my responsibility to to myself and to life really. Yeah, thank you. You you now talked about business and the use of business so that you help them to, the, the, let's say the the people who hire others or promote others. You help them to to understand what they will what they can expect when they uh, promote this person. Yeah. And you are also talking about therapy. How is that working there? What, 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 I mean, who comes to you? Okay. And then what is the intention you both are working on and what is the, the benefit, the outcome? Okay, well, when I don't work so much as a therapist anymore. I did for many years. I it was in the complementary field. Um, and as I said, I, I learned it as a diagnostic tool initially. So. People used to come to me for a lot of different health related conditions and their face would tell me so much about what was going on physically, mentally and emotionally for them. And the, the Chinese perspective was always that the mind and the body are one unit. Okay? So you can't separate them. So for me, it was always the person, not just I have a back pain or I have asthma or I have headaches or whatever it was it was always what's really going on for the person so now when i'm if i'm doing an individual session for people what i'm looking at is their their level of fulfillment in life the quality of their relationships i can look at their health and and again if i see 
uh, if I see somewhere on the face that there's a particular health issue, I will think of it in terms of not just the physical dimension, but how it's impacting on their life and what is what has what is what has created it, and what and how it also how it can impact on their 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 understanding of where they are in life and their potential to really grow and develop from there. Yeah, that's very interesting, and I think especially now in this situation where we are now, it would be so helpful to, to have a little bit more orientation how we should or could handle it without getting completely, completely worn up. I, I heard in, the, uh, in, in Germany, I'm very much more concerned about the news in Germany than here in Italy, that um, youth and young people in psych psychiatric uh, clinics, they don't find places anymore because uh, there are too many who cannot cope with the situation where all their dreams, all their expectations, all their securities have vanished. So uh, to, as an example, what could you do with a person who is coming, a young girl, let's say 15, 16 years old, and um, uh, the father discovers in, in her diary that she plans to, to su suicide. What would you be able to do? Okay, being, being very real about that, I would want to know, I, I would want to know a lot about the, the history, the family history. I would also know what, I would also need to know what kind of support services are in place. Um, I, do, I do have my own network of people in, in Ireland, particularly, which is obviously where where I'm based, um, I've done. I need to be very honest there. I I have limited, I have limited experience in in a, in a situation of potential suicide, but I do have I do have um, very close connections who work in that field. So I would be liaising with them, and not just not just looking to help. You know on my own because my, I, I know the limitations of, of my, my skills and experience. This is a very integral position, no? Yeah. We in integral uh, try and hope to reach that there are no experts who are experts in one field and then pretend to, to be able to, to cope with everything and keep the patient because oh, no. they want to make, but to, to be informed, know enough about the other fields and uh, send people to others who are better suited yeah. for this thing. So thank you for naming this. This is that should be the future of. Absolutely, oh, absolutely, yeah. No, I've seen uh, I've seen over the years too many therapists who keep people coming back for years and years, and it's like they're on this hamster wheel, and they're they're, they're getting absolutely nowhere. Uh, and the, the the therapist just keeps them locked into the trauma. And I, I think it's absolutely horrendous. Yeah, but this has also to do with personal growth issues, no? Of course. So of course. It, it's not easy when you don't have money and you have one client and you want to keep it. Of course. And so you really have to to grow up yourself. Yeah. But that's that's where it's so important that we open up to life. We open up to realize there's a much bigger picture there, and that it's not accidental that we as individuals are here because life actually wants us to be here. Yeah. So there's a whole different level of awareness we need to acquire. And I've, I've been in that situation where I didn't have money and I, I had just a handful of clients and I had to feed my family and all of that. But you still have to trust that there's a bigger picture and that if you really open, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's really the challenge. If we open to the bigger thing inside us and, the, and life itself, then life will meet us. Yeah. But we have to trust that. Yeah, for me, it's so similar. I had a situation where, but it's more the truth. Uh, there was somebody who wanted uh, doing, um, I, I'm a voice teacher, no? And yeah. she wanted to do auditions in Germany. It came to me only for for the, the language. I should correct the language. And I heard her sing and I said, you know what? Save the money, don't go there. That's, it's, you know, and I said, I can help you if you want, but you know, I could have done 10, 20 lessons only for the language, 
and then she would have come there and nobody would have considered that. So I told her the truth because for me, the truth is the main thing. Also now in this situation, I'm looking for the truth everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and um, so I lost her as a client. That's what happens when oh, yeah. you have other principles on the line. That's it. Yeah, and that's it. To be able to do that without fear is so important to just say, that's, this, is the, this is the right way. This is the right way to do it. And that's something which is telling you from inside. That's yeah. not here thinking. You, you might think, shall I do that? Shall I don't do that? But there is the voice comes from, from inside. Yeah. yeah. Let's, yeah. let's talk again about this Chinese medicine. Uh, can you tell a little bit more? Because I have heard a, a podcast of somebody. She was trained in Chinese medicine. And she said, now in the new courses, they don't do Qigong anymore. And these uh, yeah. wonderful practices, which she, she thought was a main part of, of the school. So can you talk about the importance of these, for us, not usual ways of healing <laughs> okay okay i'm i don't pretend to be an expert in traditional chinese medicine I'm, because what i what i trained in initially was something called shiatsu which is a is actually a japanese form of treatment and um it's shiatsu is based it's sometimes referred to as acupuncture without needles because you're using your fingertips and thumbs and palms to treat the same energy channels the same meridians and pressure points um, so my, although I'm working primarily with the Chinese tradition, I wasn't completely immersed in Chinese medicine, but the, the basic system, and I suppose there, there are many, sorry, there are many different branches to it as well. Um, if you're looking at the whole system, the first thing would be prevention and maintenance of health. So that that's where you'd be looking at uh, Qigong. And that was always, that was always regarded as a primary source of maintaining well-being and in in ancient times traditionally the healers in 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 chinese villages and towns they were only paid as long as people remained healthy as that people would became be healthy. a good yeah. idea today <laughs> absolutely absolutely yes so the whole the whole basic underlying philosophy was about remaining well maintaining health so that included that included um, exercise like Qigong and Qigong, Qigong was like the, the precursor, the foundation for Tai Chi. Tai Chi was something some people did, but, but not everybody. Um, Qigong was more, more universal. And I think for many people still is. Then you'd be looking at food and diet and the understanding that food played a very important role in, again, health and well-being. You'd be looking at spiritual practices, but then when you come into the actual Chinese medicine itself, um, again, food and herbs would be the main area. And then, then they would bring only when that didn't really work, then they would bring in acupuncture. Acupuncture was like, was regarded as like, um, uh, was like the, the hammer, the really powerful, the, the really powerful tool, but it wouldn't have been used all the time. Like we use it in the West as a primary a primary form of treatment but traditionally it wouldn't have been used as extensively or as immediately so they're the they're the main branches and then 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 you've got you've got um school i guess schools of philosophy in traditional in chinese history like taoism and confucianism and and uh, buddhism like what we call what we would call zen buddhism and which is the japanese approach was originally chan buddhism in in China. So a lot of, although I don't think they would like to talk about it so much, a lot of Japanese philosophy and culture in some respects would have originated in China. So, um, so there's, 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 it's a very, it's a really vast area. It's a really vast area. And there's so many, so many different strands to it, but that's, that's a very, very, very brief synopsis. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I'm hearing that you are, I mean, before we, when we talk that you are doing courses and that you plan also online courses. So the question is, now when you see me, you, you see my face, but you don't see it in, 
in reality. How well is this work what you're doing possible to do online with the camera and, and things like that? Yeah, um, my preference is always to work live with people. In, you know, no pun intended, face to face in a room together, uh, whether that's individuals or a group. But the reality is now, this is what we have, and this is what we're going to have probably for the foreseeable future. So, um, so it works, it and it can work very, very well. I've had to adjust my, I guess, my perspective on it because first of all, I I didn't like the idea of just working like this and being remote but I've had to realize that this is this is this is the reality we're faced with so I had to do my own internal adjustment and really what I do now particularly um yeah I suppose that there's the two things in in a group in a group scenario it is it is very different if I'm teaching a live course it's different because I'm showing I'm showing things on the screen. I might be using PowerPoint or something like that. And obviously then I can't see people's faces. I can't see their reaction. So it, it, it means being much more patient, being much more, being less spontaneous, um, and then making sure there's a big interactive dimension to it as well. So, so you, 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 you pause and you have a break for people to ask their questions and, and all of that it's a it's it's a different discipline but once once i realized that that discipline was had structure with the key elements to it i realized i could do it and and be comfortable with it but i'm still learning it's still a, it's still an adjustment when it's an individual session what I, I i make sure that people have their their face close to the camera so i can see their face in detail and and then i can I can tell a lot about them. I can, yeah, but even if people just send me a good a good photo of a face, I can tell a lot from that anyway. But so so you see only the structure of the face, or do you see also or or judge uh, the expression when I do whatever I do? No, uh, it's in movement. Or I'm I'm wondering because you say also a photo. Sometimes you have photos of yourself where you say, "Oh, that's not me. I don't want oh, to." Be oh, I know, that. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, a photo—no pun intended—a photo is a like a snapshot in time. But mm -hmm. really, what I'm primarily looking at, what the Chinese this ancient uh, tradition is about, is looking at the static facial features. Mm -hmm. um, I can also look then at body language. I can look at micro expressions. Which are much more immediate. The body language is often a reflection of deeper patterns, but the micro expressions are more, much more immediate. This is how I'm feeling now. This is this is what's really going off me right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I do take into account all of that. But I do have, me, I do have clients where they may have, say, communication issues with mm -hmm. somebody, or they're they're going to meet them in a business context. And they want me to give them insights into the person before they meet. So they will send me a good facial photo and I will be able to tell them a lot about the personality and the behavior style and how the person communicates just from the photo. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I was thinking now another thing. No? Now they do um, for the passports and for surveillance, uh, they, they measure the faces. And with yeah. all these things, that's a completely different intention behind it, you know. And that's really the static, the the, the mm -hmm. how do you say the 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 um, external features, how many millimeter are this, and how you know that's not what yeah. you are interested in. You are interested in the expression, I guess. Yeah, I'm interested in who the person is, and that's revealed. I mean, the, the, the static facial, facial features reveal so much. And as I said earlier, the eyes, the eyes really tell me so much more about way beyond the surface and much, much deeper than anything you'll see on the exterior. Um, the light in the eyes, the expression of the eyes, whether the eyes are really big and open or whether they're narrow, all those things tell you so much about the person and their history and where they are in their life. And that's not the intention of our governments who want us to, to be measured. Oh, not that way. No, no. They're purely looking in terms of security and terrorism and counterterrorism. And 
I guess it's I guess it's understandable coming from where they're coming from, but I'm very glad I'm not involved in work like that. I'm glad too, because that's how can you uh, be in peace in doing something like that? Yeah. Yeah. So you said you don't do any coaching or little coaching anymore, but you still are speaking about creating now that you're being comfortable on, on online and with video. So what are your plans? What uh, I mean, if people, I hope people are watching this, <laughs> So, uh, and they're getting interested. Mm -hmm. So what can they expect from you? Why would they contact you? Okay. Well, I, I, I teach live online courses and um, what I, there, there, there's, one, there's one ongoing at the moment. And um, what I'm calling it, the, the name of that is Your Face Doesn't Lie, Communication Skills for Exceptional Relationships. And really my, my whole focus is on helping people uh, provide provide people with the skills to to communicate authentically and to recognize how to communicate with the person or the people they're meeting to really communicate so that it's it's very real it's very authentic and it's and we're 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 delivering our message our authentic message in the way the other person rec best receives it and really processes information because so often what happens when people talk, they talk at each other instead of to each other. So I'm helping to bridge that, to bridge that gap, to, to facilitate people in building exceptional relationships. So that's, that's the, the, the primary live course I'm, I'm teaching at the moment. Um, I will be doing, I'm developing um, a diagnostic course for therapists, which is much more health, particularly mind, mind and body. Um, I'm, I'm also developing some courses which will be pre-recorded for for sale on, on my website and maybe some other platforms i'm looking at one on negotiation skills and i'm i'm probably looking i'm, I'm i haven't got it formed yet i'm still getting ideas on it but about communicating effectively online because obviously i've had to learn a lot about that myself um and it's and it's essential because i'm hearing from so many people that when they're seeing like a face or a or a head on screen, they don't really get a sense of the person and they don't know who they can trust. So I'm working on something in that at the moment, but it, it hasn't quite taken full shape just yet. Yeah, this is very interesting because it comes to my mind. I often take part in these um, online meetings where maybe 20 people you see in these little boxes, no? And, um, Somebody is telling a story or whatever, and everybody is looking like this. I always, uh, I say, oh yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, when I like it, and I express it, when I see the other people like, that's so uninspiring <laughs> to or, continue yeah. to, 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 to talk. So I'm wondering, um, how do you deal with this? I mean, just telling people uh, don't sit like this, but uh, I don't know. How, how would you go? Uh, what you would you teach this skill? Yeah, that's that's something I'm still working on because so often what we're seeing is really from sort of the neck up. So I'm obviously, given that I focus on the face particularly, I would be um, telling people how to read the basic facial structures, and then then bringing in the expressions. And even things like how to listen, how to demonstrate that we're listening. For example, if we have our head slightly to the side, it's it's a it's a it's regarded as a universal sign that we are actually listening to the person, because because we're showing we're showing our we're exposing our neck, so we're showing our vulnerability. So, but this is. This is amazing because I find myself often like this and I think, Can, can't you sit upright? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks for the info. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then there's, the, then there's the thing of not, so many people have this desire to talk. Mm. So listening, allowing silence as well is very important, particularly in a business context. Allowing silence and not having enough feeling that we have to speak. Because when, when we allow silence, people are often revealing so much more anyway. 
but so many people are uncomfortable with silence. That's often very challenging. I mean, in many circles I'm about, that silence is normal, but you have to learn to, to tolerate that you don't have to jump in immediately. Yeah. Just, I mean, a minute silence where you are supposed to hear all the time something, a minute is a long time. <laughs> yeah, for some people it's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I did, um, I know I did a Facebook Live post many months ago. And I held up a watch and I, I just allowed it to go to 30 seconds. And some people were really freaked out by it because I didn't speak for 30 seconds. <laughs> and some people talked me to said how, you know, how brave it was to do it. And I, I, they would just told me that how, how much fear they're carrying. Yeah. And uh, this is, um, in my opinion, also a, a way of not meeting oneself of wanting to be in the outside and not in the in the inside now. Yeah. 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 I mean so I mean you would know it yourself. So many people, you know the image of the swan where it's 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 swimming along very serene on the surface and the feet underneath are just, you know, working away frantically. So many people are like that. And that's that's something when I'm when I'm particularly when I'm when I'm observing people closely, I can see I can see who is like that and who is actually nice and serene. So tell me about me. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that on the surface, I'm often um, calm, but there are moments inside or times inside where I'm really in upheaval and then I'm getting calm again. And so. Sure. Well, that, that, I mean, the reality is that probably applies to most of us. If we were, if we were constantly serene, then that wouldn't be, I don't think that would be real life. And in fact, I, 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 I tell this story sometimes, a friend of mine in Dublin, he used to, um, he was involved in Zen meditation and they used to have, he had a group in, uh, who used to meet regularly and they had a, they had a, they had contact with a Japanese Buddhist monk who used to travel the world uh, teaching people Zen meditation. And this guy, this he had, he had he had trained as a monk from a very very young age, so he was he was really living the Zen philosophy. He was like he was Zen as far as everybody was concerned, and he had no he had no real possessions of his own. He just traveled the world. People would pay for his transport, his accommodation, and feed him, and he just lived that life. And he was very very calm. But he he was in Dublin for a visit, and he he wanted to take a bus into the city centre. And in Dublin, the buses are all exact fare. You do, they did not give you any change. Mm -hmm. And he only had, I think, a, a 10 euro note. Mm -hmm. That was all the money he was carrying. He only had a 10 euro note. So he wanted to get on the bus and the driver would not give him any change. And he completely freaked out. He completely freaked out. And I thought this was an absolute absolutely wonderful, wonderful story, um, because it just showed that everybody has their challenges. So I've no, I've no illusions about myself either, because there are times things challenge me and I'm, yeah, yeah, I get stressed, of course. Um, so just going back to your original question about you, um, I don't say, just to preface it, I don't say nice things for the sake of it. I, I just tell you what I see. I am a lover of truth. And lately when somebody asked me, what are you doing? I don't teach voice anymore. And I'm just doing these interviews and I have no profession anymore, let's say. Yep. And I wrote down, I'm a seeker of truth and wisdom. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a, there's, a number, there's, a, there's a number of things which are very immediately apparent to me. Number one, um, number one you, you are a strong personality. You are a strong, expressive personality. And you have very high standards. You have, very, you have perfectionist tendencies. Too you, you much. Very, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you can be very highly critical of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you have learned through your life experience to be somewhat less critical of others, but you still have this strong internal thing of, oh, I could do it better, or I should do it better, or why don't I know more, or why don't I understand more? You have that within you. And that's that's this ongoing search for truth and wisdom. 
Um, so part of your challenge is to is to learn to relax more deeply within yourself, accept yourself more and more fully as you are, and accept that you are already enough. <laughs> and and that, that that because that actually allows you to open more. Because one of our challenges for so many of us in the Western world, and, and certainly for you growing up in, in Germany, but so many of the, the German traditions, and my children are half German, so I'm well acquainted, mm -hmm. acquainted with Germany. Um, there was such a strictness, and there's a there's, you have to work hard and you have to you have to push yourself and you have to strive. Um, and there's not enough about just relaxing and being. And I don't mean I don't I mean being when I say relaxing, I don't mean being spaced out. I mean being at ease within oneself. And that takes off so much pressure and actually allows our creativity to really, to really blossom. And it doesn't stop us from, from achieving whatever, whatever our goals are. It doesn't achieve, it doesn't stop us from having high standards. Um, so part of part of the, the consequence of the perfectionism and the pushing yourself really hard is you have also experienced significant disappointment in life. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've had, I know you had a loss a few years ago. I understand that. But aside from that, you have also had some very significant disappointments. And part of that is a consequence of having pushed hard, so hard that you didn't allow yourself to really go, ah, life is wonderful. I tell you, that's absolutely true. And I, for a long time, I'm working on that, you know, and uh, reminding me and, you know, calm and, and everything. And being here in the countryside, I have created a possibility where I always am reminded that what is really important is, is not that what they have instilled in me or what I choose. When you think about the archetypes of the soul, my soul seems to have chosen that. The not being uh, uh, enough and being uh, impatient in doing these things. So since I know that, it's more easy to handle these things. But I think that's uh, the life's, um, the life's, my life's um, journey. And I'm glad that since about 10 years, it has become very obvious to me. I did the feminine power, power teachings, coachings and everything. And there I learned about all these beliefs. I'm not enough. I'm not safe. I'm not, <gasps> you know, I didn't know that in this detail before. And then I realized, oh, yeah, okay. And that was one of these moments of complete transformation when you re really see where you were in and what belief systems personal and also about the world, you know, the, the belief system in the, in the world crashed a little later <laughs> in the yeah. last four or five years more or less. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad about that. Also, living without these illusions in some way is also more difficult. Yeah. I, I see now so many people prefer living in the illusion instead of, and I can understand that because in some way, being like a child and not knowing anything, it seems to be easier, but is it really? That's the question, isn't it? That's the question. And it's not I for us to out, decide, yeah. I find, found out in all these processes I had of realizing what is really going on. I mean, now in the world, let's say, and also before many other things. First, it was a complete shock for a month or two or three months even. And then it came through a sort of relief now I know, now I'm, it makes sense, even if it's horrible, but it makes sense to me. And before you come into this dissonance, how can that be? How can that be, you know? And this is for me much more difficult to, 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 to deal with than to know, let's say the truth, but even if it's bad, but it's better you know what you are yeah. dealing with, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because when we don't know, there's always that fear. Mm. There's always a fear of, oh, it could be this or it could be that. But once we know, then, then if we allow ourselves, we can relax, we can breathe. And say, ah, okay, this is how I can deal with it. Or this is what I can do today. Yeah, exactly. Because if you have only fear uh, and don't know even what about, 
then you cannot do anything. But if you know exactly, yeah. and this is part of my, my journey, I'm also Enya type four. Uh, so, you know, always seeing the negative and, 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 and things like that. And so, yeah, learning how to, how to deal with reality, that's a, a big challenge for me. Yeah. And I think for the whole world, I mean, in the moment, it seems to be as if everything needs to be covered up and manipulated in some way. And I don't think that's a healthy way to do. What does your approach say to how we can deal with the present situation? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's some ideas you don't have to give away. But... Yeah, um, I I have so many questions about what's really going on, and I'm very skeptical about a lot of what, obviously, our government here is doing, and what so many other governments appear to be doing, and in my view, mishandling so much and so much misinformation. So, really, what I am doing is I'm being as at peace, cultivating as much inner peace as I can in the situation. I'm maintaining the contact I can maintain with people. Like for example, in Ireland here, we're officially not allowed to travel beyond five kilometers from our home, unless it's on essential business. Um, that doesn't make any sense to me, but so many of my family and friends, they accept that. So, I'm looking to I'm looking to maintain what contact I can with people who are open to meeting. Obviously, a lot of a lot of the connection now is online. Um, so I'm really I'm really looking to cultivate my own inner peace more and more deeply and see it as an opportunity for my own growth and see where the opportunities are for my own growth. So so obviously more time for meditation, maybe more time for writing, making sure I'm I'm, I'm eating properly and just really. I guess living as clean a life as I can and removing as much distraction, seeing as an opportunity to let go of things, whether they're physical things, material things, or behaviors that I no longer need that just don't serve me. So I'm seeing it almost as a time of, I guess really as a time of very deep reflection and a, and a preparation for, I'm not entirely sure what yet. Uh, I mean, as for example, in, in, a, in our, previous conversation I told you that it's my desire and my intention to move to Italy to live I don't know when that will be possible but I see everything I'm doing now as preparatory steps towards that and then who knows from there <laughs> yeah wonderful yeah I think this is a challenge I see it more or less the same way for me is uh, the teaching to be less concerned about the future but live from one day to the other Yep. and try to do the make the best out of the day going in the garden looking at these wonderful flowers which are about 20 meters 15 meters from here when i look around the corner i see the 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 lawn with all these beautiful oh wow yes flowers. yes really that makes my heart glow when i see this uh, you know of course. It's like like a huge gift of, 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 of nature. So, and I don't, don't need to do anything. They come out again and again and again, and they spread in all other parts of, of the yeah. ground. So that's wonderful. Yeah, it's a teaching to, I mean, it's also the age that you let go a little bit of ideas to become a famous singer or to become, I don't know what, you know, yeah. uh, but this is an ulterior um, reminder that what, what is life really about? It's not about getting a lot of money and no. having a lot of, of, I mean, I have a lot of possession here, but it's not really as, as possession because it costs more than, uh, than I get from it. Sure. But uh, it's more important to take care for the, for the country, to take care for the plants, to, to also to enjoy it and, and to be connected with with life, I would say. No, I'm looking out on the on the you know on the <laughs> lawns and, and and the trees, the oak trees everywhere. That's it's just That's wonderful. Beautiful. And it fills me with with a deep joy. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So yeah. I hope in the future to see you here and show you this wonderful <laughs> these wonderful oh. things, life and not oh, oh 
yes, absolutely. I'm so looking forward to it. No, I thank you very much for this conversation. And before we stop, uh, you can you share uh, the information where, where people can find you? And sure, okay. Um, if if it's from a business perspective, you can people can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Joseph McGuire. Um, if it's people can connect, I have a I have a Facebook page, a personal page, and I have a Facebook um, business page, and my my business name is Clear Sight Communications. That's C L E A R S I G H T Communications, and my website is clearsightcommunications.com. So there's a variety of ways to to contact me. And that's good. I will put it under the video then and in the website where I create the page for you. So wonderful. I hope people are inspired as I was and still am, because for me, this is a completely new view on life mm -hmm. which to have, and I never knew that it existed. <laughs> so for me, learning new things is the best what can ever happen. Absolutely. And that's also why I connect with people and you know, yep. find out what is on the world, in the world of <laughs> wonderful things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Awesome. A lot. Wonderful pleasure. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you.